The Great Escape, the story of William and Ellen Craft. Passing as a white man traveling with his servant, two slaves fled their masters in a thrilling tale of deception and disguise. Ellen, a slave with very fair skin, disguised herself as a young white cotton planter traveling with his slave William. William was Ellen's husband. It was William who came up with the scheme to hide in plain sight, but ultimately it was Ellen who convincingly masked her race, her gender, and her social status during their four-day journey. Ellen and William lived in Macon, Georgia, and were owned by different masters. Ellen was the offspring of her first master and one of his biracial slaves, and she had frequently been mistaken for a member of his white family. Ellen and William were married, but experienced brutal family separation. William, knowing that slaveholders could take their slaves to any state, slave or free, came up with the plan. Before setting out on December 21st, 1848, William cut Ellen's hair. She improved on the deception by putting her right arm in a sling, which would prevent hotel clerks and others from expecting her as a disguised man to sign a registry or other papers. Georgia law prohibited teaching slaves to read or write, so neither Ellen nor William could do either. Refining the disguise, Ellen asked William to wrap bandages around much of her face, hiding her smooth skin and giving her a reason to limit conversation with strangers. She wore a pair of men's trousers that she herself had sewn. She put on a pair of green spectacles and a top hat. Light complexion Ellen passed herself off as his master, a wealthy young white man because it was not customary for women to travel with male servants. When they finally arrived in Philadelphia, Ellen and William were quickly given assistance and lodging by the Underground Abolitionist Network. They received a reading lesson their very first day in the city. Three weeks later, they moved to Boston where William resumed work as a cabinet maker and Ellen became a seamstress. With the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1850, two years after arriving in Boston, slave hunters arrived with the intent of returning them to Georgia. The crafts fled again, this time to England, where they were able to settle down and eventually had five children. After 20 years in England, they returned to the States. In 1873, they were established a cooperative farm school in Woodville, Georgia, to educate and employ newly emancipated men and women. Ellen crossed the boundaries of race, class, gender, and physical ability by passing as a white male planter with William posing as her personal servant. Their daring escape was widely publicized, making them among the most famous of fugitives from slavery. Until next time, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.